G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, we're going to do one more review, and uh, then I'll probably have a break for a while. And this one's going to be something that everybody can use. Some of the things I've reviewed, a bit of a niche thing, you know, email gear cutters and you know, high temperature brazing torches and things like that. Not everybody uses them, but drills. Now, this is a set of drills I got quite a while back and these are just plain high speed steel drills and these have been really good these have been really good I gave them a full score you know I thought they were excellent and I've used them a lot I use them on the lathe because I don't want to screw up the uh, the shank you know because these are in pristine condition I only use these in collets if you put drills into you know normal chucks you do horrible things to them because in a collet the drills won't slip or highly unlikely to slip and even if they were to slip it won't do any damage but when you got them in a three jaw chuck those, those jaws are going to rip the bejesus out of the bottom of these if they do slip you know and you can't do them up as tight in a three jaw chuck as you can in a uh, in a collet for a start so yeah, to totally different. So these are my best set. And they've been good. I've done a lot of drilling with them and no problem whatsoever. And uh, yeah, they hold their edge pretty good. So that was those. Anyway, Banggood have sent me another set. But these ones are not high speed steel. The set they sent me a cobalt. So I'll show you the package. So here they are. Also in a little red box. Now when you buy these sets you can get them uh, in various sets, various sizes, you know, you can have two rows of drills or three rows of drills, uh, there's about three different sizes. And anyway, this is what they sent me, uh, here's some screen grabs of what should be in the box, so we'll have a look. Okay, I'll get the knife and open them without trying not to cut myself. I'll do it left handed. The Bill Baggins knife. Very sharp. Too sharp for a guy like me. And we've got more here. Right. It's your usual tin box, you know, that this sort of stuff comes in. But they do the job. Sort of a universal drill box. Alright, I'll give it, a bit, give it a bit of clean up afterwards. Alright. So, these should be a different colour. And they are. They're a Cobalt colour. Cobalt, cobalt drills all are this sort of colour. Unless they've got some sort of tin coating on them, but most most times they don't. And uh, yeah, the box is a little bit different. Yeah, these are metric, that's good. I wasn't sure what I was getting. Yeah, these boxes are a little bit different. I've got a, a metal support section in them. And this one's just got a, a metal sort of brace. Anyway, these are the drills. Whoa, they look pretty, pretty good, don't they? Oh, yes, they're sharp. Razor sharp. And that one is. Yep, they look good. And they're very, very sharp. Now, these are M35 Cobalt. Now, that's 5% cobalt, so they're basically stainless high-speed steel, same as these, and they have a percentage of cobalt in them, and M35 
35 means 5% cobalt. Now M42 means 8%. But the problem is the more cobalt you add to the drills, the more brittle they become. And even 5% is really, you really don't want to hand hold these drills. Uh, and I'll show you why you don't want to hand hold these drills. Here's my old set of existing cobalt drills. And as you can see, they, they look different. Different colour, these are tin coated. You can also see there's uh, quite a few missing in action here. These are the popular sizes. And they've all been broken, and some small ones. These actually perform quite well. Uh, I bought them at a farm field day, oh, how? over 20 years ago and uh, yeah they're cobalt but how much cobalt I can't say but all I can say is that I've managed to break some and probably hand holding them so if you're going to buy cobalt drills be warned you really need to use them in a drill press or a lathe or a mill you can hand hold them but do it at your own peril because you, they will snap a lot easier than these. These are good hard high speed steel. They don't bend, you know, the really cheap shitty high speed steel drills you can buy from, you know, all over the place. Some of those things are like bananas and they bend and I've even seen them un unravel. Nothing I've had like that, but I've seen pictures of really bad drills that have actually un unraveled, unscrewed. How bad is that? But the experience I get with them is, yeah, if you're going to use them, uh, yeah, you want a drill press or a lathe or a mill for this type of drill. These you can hang hold them, no problem whatsoever. The thing with them though, you always want to wear eye protection because if you ever use these in a, a drill press or a lathe or a mill, they got so much power that if the drill jams, it will snap any of these drills and they'll literally grenade on you. I've had a, one grenade on me once, a big one years ago, and it smashed into about four pieces and one piece stuck a, about a quarter of an inch into my arm, went through my work shirt, my heavy drill work shirt, stuck in my arm and we had some bloodletting uh, for a while. So I had to see the, uh, the medical chest man and uh, take myself up to carry on. Okay, I'm diverging. This set you can still get, and this set, of course, is what they've got now, the cobalt ones. I can't remember whether they had the cobalt when I, bought this, when I got this or not. You can see I've broken one and I've shortened it a bit. That one's been broken. The cobalt drills are 33% more expensive than the plain high-speed steel ones. So they do cost you more, but they can go through a lot harder material and stay sharper longer. That's the name of the game. Just to show you how much difference there is between using drills in collets and in a three-jaw chuck. These are quality Australian made high-speed steel drills and look what's happened to the shank. They're all marked, they've all had slippage, whereas these Chinese ones that I've been using, the been good ones, and I've been using those purely in collets. They're all as good as the day they were spat out of the factory. So yeah, drill trucks. They do nasty things to, uh, to drill bits. But for hand drills, you know, portable drills, that's what you get, that's what they will have. And uh, most drill presses have just got the same thing too. But anybody who really cares about their drills and maintaining accuracy will always use collets. Here's a look at the, uh, the cutting edges. And they are damn sharp. Very sharp. Beautifully ground. I've got a uh, yeah, nice finish on them. Lengthwise, they're pretty much the same as the high-speed steel ones, and uh, yeah, not a lot of difference there. 
So it must be time to do some drilling. I've got everybody's favourite. Bit of old rebar. Bit of railway dog plate. That's good hard stuff. So it's the rebar. I've got some X. Uh, very hard metal from a Scott Bonner lawnmower. That is really hard stuff. I've got some really hard round stock, which is, well, I don't know what it is. It's, it's some stuff I got at uh, Scrapyard, and it's so hard you cannot tap a thread in it. You know, even to drill it is, even turn it, it's a hell of a job. So, yeah, this is almost unworkable, this stuff. And then I've got a bit of spring steel. Yeah, I've <laughs> I don't think it's going to go through spring steel. You never know. The only drills that go through spring steel that I've seen are those flat bladed ones that are like masonry drills and they will go through that. They literally burn their way through it. But I've never tried a cobalt drill on it. So they're the the five things I'm going to try it out on and just see how they perform. Let's get on with it. To do this, we're going to use the poor, long-suffering CQ9325 Chinese lathe that I have had for like 20 years and cost me 1100 bucks. Probably the best 1100 bucks I've ever spent in my entire life. So we'll swap out the three-jaw scroll chuck and put on the much heavier, more usable, more useful four-jaw six inch four jaw now this is why i say don't go beyond a 10 inch swing lathe or a six inch chuck because these mothers get bloody heavy and this is a six inch to replace a five inch and there's a lot of metal there if you go 8 inch, you'll be busting your boiler trying to swap chucks over. 6 inch is about the most comfortable size you can go. These non screw type chuck backing plates are great because you can reverse the, the lathe and nothing's going to unscrew and uh, ruin your day. This is a Chinese chuck, it's a good one. In fact, they're both Chinese. Following the chuck's a pretty easy job, really. But as I said, if you go over six inch, you are going to struggle. It won't be anywhere near as uh, simple. All right, we're good to go. Easy as that. It's a lot of chuck for a lathe this size, but it's bloody handy. First up we'll go 8mm into rebar. I'll do all these tests with 8mm because that's a, just a good intermediate size. Now, hardening is going to be an issue can be an issue. There's two ways to deal with hardening. You can either go very slow, which I'm going to be, in bottom gear, 146 RPM, and use no coolant. That way you won't get a chill factor. Or you can go slow speed and use coolant all the time. Where people go wrong is they use coolant intermittently. So your workpiece gets hot and then suddenly you give it a, a chill with some coolant. And it's just like chilling any hot metal, it'll harden it. So I'm going to start off by doing this slow speed with no coolant and see how it goes. If it does the job, we'll, we'll stick to that. Uh, yeah, that's the danger. Unless you've got a constant cooling supply, you'll get a chill factor and you see smoke coming off. And... Okay, we'll try this first and see what happens.
146. 8 mil Riva. Okay, that was no problem. We'll try a bit of cool it on it to see if it's any easier. Mm, about the same, maybe slightly easier, not much. So it handles rebar fine. Scrap railway dog plate. Let's try that. Ah, you see, piss easy. This does this easy as effortless. Scott Bonner Lawnmower Mystery Metal. Very hard, this stuff. Piece of cake. Absolutely no effort whatsoever. This is the mystery metal that's really hard. Just trying to face it and the lathe is just bogging down, even with light cuts. If you can drill this, it's really gonna be doing some something special. This is really, really hard stuff. I'm trying to just take a very light facing cut off. You can see the lathe is in bottom gear and it's straggling. Okay, so we know that's really, really hard. Super hard. So, let's try the drill, see what it does. If it can get through this, it'll be something. Really something. Okay, here goes nothing. Whoa, yeah, look at this. That's pretty amazing. I'm guessing that this steel is possibly hydraulic ram or something like that. I'm not sure what it is. It's really, really hard. Alright, I'll put a bit of coolant on there. See if it makes it a bit easier for it. And when we're in the lowest speed, we're in bottom gear. No way you would tap a thread in this stuff. It's, it's be impossible. Absolutely.
pretty good. That was pretty impressive. All right, this is spring steel. I'll try and put a uh, start point in it with a high speed steel center drill. <laughs> Getting into it. But it's struggling. Really struggling. Okay, I don't want to break the tip off, so I won't go any harder. Now we'll try the the eight mil drill. I reckon it might do this. But this is spring steel, for sure you can see, you know. It's been cut down. Okay, here we go. It's doing it slowly. A little bit. Doing a good job of it. <laughs> I never thought it would do this. Oh, it's making an easy work of it. It's amazing. Maybe it's not very hard spring. Hey, look at that. Easy. Did it easy. That's amazing. Alright, let's try some stainless steel. See how we go on that. This is pretty hard stuff. So, walk in the park. Walk in the park. A bit of lube on it. These are cake. I gotta say, these are really good. They're fantastic. Yeah, no problem with them whatsoever. They're way better than the other cobalt ones I've got. They uh, they cut cleaner and yeah, they're very sharp. That edge still feels as sharp as a razor. Yep, these are good. These are really good. Here's the uh, the cutting edges. You can see they're in good shape. They didn't suffer any damage. It was sharp as when I started. Yeah, the drill did a good job and handled all that stuff. No problem whatsoever. So yeah, I'd have no trouble at all giving this a 10 out of 10. I think these are as good as I've seen. Certainly, they did a good job and. Uh, yeah, I'd have no trouble recommending these to anyone. Alright, now the product link is in the video description if anyone's interested in getting a set of these. And yeah, well that's, uh, that's it for this review. So that's it for me, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.